次はアプラスイディアダのシャシー開発シニアマネージャーであるグイド・トゾリン氏の講演になりますマヒンドラ・マヒンドラのビクラマン氏との共同発表となる本講演ではイディアダと協力して行われたマヒンドラの主力7人乗り SUV XUV700 のシャシー開発について取り上げますディム250ドライビングシミュレーターを使用することで全体の開発プロセスをおよそ12ヶ月短縮できた事例をご紹介します Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to be in Japan in the Zero Prototype Summit of Via Grade providing this presentation. My presentation is about a project that for us is like a dream come true because it's the first opportunity we had to develop a new product from the early stages of the concept development until the sign off and SOP completely around the driving simulator. So this Has been, me, has been made possible by our customer Mahindra, who believed in Idiada as a key partner for the development of their flagship product, the XUV700. Before providing a, an explanation about the project and why the simulator was so important for it, let me introduce briefly our companies. Mahindra is part of the Mahindra Group and it's uh, uh, an OEM providing a different sort of products from passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles uh, up to electric vehicles. They are one of the biggest manufacturers in India and uh, they uh, sell around 350,000 vehicles per year and they have uh, a strong presence in, in more than 50 countries. Idiada is a service、uh, provider for the automotive industry. It is,、uh, its main headquarters is located in Europe, in Spain, but we have a presence in more than 22 countries. We are very famous for our state of the art facilities, among which we have、uh, different proving grounds and, of course, also different simulators. More precisely, we have a DIM 250 in our headquarters in Spain. And we have also a DIM 250 in China. So, now let me explain the project that we have done together with Mahindra, starting from the product that we have developed together. The XUV 700 is a completely new seven seater SUV, and it is Mahindra's flagship product. Which means it is the product that must have the highest level of performance within their product range. But however, it is also a product that needs to,、uh, which has a selling、uh, cost of around 6,000 euros as a starting price, which means it is a product that also has to be developed, taking into account cost effectiveness.、Uh, it has a front suspension, which is a MacPherson. While the rear suspension is a multi link suspension with a longitudinal blade. This kind of suspension was not developed before by Mahindra, so for them it was the first time this architecture was adopted. We had very important objectives、uh, when developing the dynamics performance of this vehicle. First、uh, objective was we wanted to achieve a very radical improvement. In vehicle dynamics performance in comparison with the predecessor. The predecessor was called XUV500, and it was a product that, whose vehicle dynamics was not really recognized as leading in the market. And they wanted this to change radically in this new vehicle. Second, they wanted to have a very streamlined development process, in, meaning that we wanted to develop the vehicle in 30 months. From the kickoff until SOP, and、uh, this happened uh, during uh, COVID uh, times as well, so this was even a bigger challenge. And last but not least, they wanted the physical development cost to be reduced by around 25% in comparison with previous projects. In fact, they used to dedicate a big effort in physical development. However, achieving、uh, results which were not、uh, 
aligned with the amount of effort and, and cost. So these, of course, are very ambitious uh, targets. And uh, in order to achieve them, we had uh, three key elements in the project. The first is the strong integration between the design teams and the simulation teams, meaning that the design was led by the functionality uh, and not vice versa. This means that the, the simulation teams were defining specific targets for each and every component, and every design decision needed to be validated in CAE in, term of, in terms of performance. The second aspect is that all physical development had to occur in the market, so in this case on the Indian roads. So in, even if a big portion of the physical development and the chassis tuning was done by IDIADA engineers, uh, European, from the European uh, Technical Center, still these people were doing the tuning in India in order to take into account the specific requirements of the market and the specific uh, road surfaces that, and, and driving conditions. And last, but I would say that this is the most important factor, we proposed an, uh, an approach which was very much based on the driving simulator, which means that every single component before being produced was actually validated and refined in the driving simulator, and also every design, design decision was taken only based on driving simulator uh, validation. And so how was the simulator introduced throughout the development program? So first of all, uh, we started defining subjective targets together with, uh, with Mahindra, where we uh, tested different competitor vehicles and uh, defined our high-level targets from a subjective point of view. Then, through a target setting process, based on objective-subjective correlation, we defined also targets at objective level. These objective level targets then had to be cascaded into suspension level targets. So this is done through a process which we call target cascading. In this target cascading process, we define the specific targets for the front suspension and the rear suspension in terms of kinematics and compliance in terms of uh, um, stiffnesses, in terms of tire performance, etc. So these specific targets have to be aligned with the complete vehicle level targets that we defined previously. So in this process, we make use of models such as uh, VI carrier time and others. And at the end of this, we have all our suspension level targets. Then finally, we go through different loops of optimization and validation using more detailed models, such as multi-body models, such as Adams, in which each and every component is tuned virtually and the specific the targets are defined for hard points location, properties of each and every component, such as bushings, springs, uh, dampers, etc. So only after all this process has occurred in the virtual environment, we finally build the parts and move towards prototype development. So we decided that the simulator should not focus on just one part of this process, but we used it in order to support all the three different phases. So from the very early stages of the development, we used the simulator also to refine the targets and for the target cascading process. And then we used it also during the hard point freeze phase. And finally, we also used it to validate the final properties of the components that needed to be produced. In total, we had uh, around uh, 22 days distributed in the following way. We had uh, two sessions during the target setting and cascading phase three sessions during, before the hardpoint freeze milestone, 
and finally three sessions before freezing the design of the components. But in order to make this a little bit more practical, let me give you some example of how the simulator has been used to take key decision during the design of this vehicle. The first example is about uh, the rear hard points freeze. As I mentioned before, this specific suspension was not within the portfolio of Mahindra. So the hard point freeze was especially critical. We have, at, at the time we had uh, three different candidates with each candidate with uh, different pros and cons for the hard points. And we were not able to take a final decision purely based on offline simulations. So we decided to generate different candidates of each hard point proposal. And we went to the simulator where each candidate was tuned in order to get mature enough for a decision to be taken. And finally, we evaluated the pros and cons of each setup based on expert driver's feedback. So thanks to this activity, a decision was taken for one specific setup. And the fundamental behavior of this setup was finally also reflected in the physical prototype that was, that was built uh, later on. And that was evaluated by the same driver who was on the driving simulator. This allowed us to have a very fast and efficient decision making about this important point, and especially we didn't have to modify the hard points after they were validated on the simulator. The second example is about the steering system. After initial conversations with the steering supplier, we realized that the steering system was a weak uh, element in our chassis. And this was related with a lack of stiffness of the system in different uh, uh, parts of it. However, to modify the design of the steering required a quite significant investment from Mahindra side. And uh, in order to take this decision whether to make the investment or not, we decided to organize uh, a session with the head of development uh, of Mahindra for him, for him to be able to decide whether or not it was worth to spend the money in improving this component. So a session were, was organized with uh, the current design specs versus improved design specs uh, defined by IDIADA. After this session, it was finally decided to allocate budget for this uh, improvement of this component and uh, a civic, uh, significant improvement was finally also validated again on the proving ground. And the last example is about uh, the dampers. We all know that dampers are a component which is very difficult to uh, tune virtually. However, the driving simulator allowed us to really bring virtual damper development to a much higher uh, stage. In we, thanks to the simulator, we realized that the initial construction that was proposed by the supplier was not making it possible for us to achieve the force velocity curves that we wanted to have on the vehicle. So we had to clarify exactly which targets we had for the force velocity properties. And uh, we needed to evaluate whether the supplier was able with their technologies to provide uh, the targets we requested. So we organized two sessions on the DIM. In the first session, we defined our force velocity curve targets for the dumpers for the different variants. And in the second session, we had information from the supplier about the actual range of tunability of their components. And we validated that this range was sufficient for us to take a final decision on the proving ground. So this made it possible for us to go to the proving ground and to have this component with enough range of tunability and finally achieve our performance goals. 
So now let me summarize a little bit the results that we were able to achieve. It is very difficult to quantify precisely what the impact has been of the simulator on this program. However, together with Mahindra, we have made a comparison with previous development activities they have done, and we tried to pr provide an estimate for the impact it had. The impact was evaluated considering the maturity level that we achieved during the virtual phase in comparison with the final specs of the, of the vehicles and uh, comparing uh, what was possible to achieve in previous programs without the simulator and what we were able to achieve in this program. As you can see, in most of the components, we were able to elevate the level, the level of maturity that was reached during the virtual phases by a very significant amount, even though for some components still we have room to improve. And all this has been achieved in only 22 days of simulator, which we believe is a very reasonable amount. And in these 22 days, we were able to evaluate more than 450 different setups. This also gives you an idea of how quickly the development occurs in a simulator, because to evaluate a similar amount of setups in the physical world, of course, we would have needed to spend a much longer time and a much higher amount of money in order to produce the parts and go to the tracks with drivers, etc. So overall, this allowed to reduce the tuning time by around 35%, which is a, a very significant amount. And also the cost to produce parts was reduced by around 30%. And this had a this impact was especially related with long lead items that were almost entirely defined on the simulator. And of course, we have also an impact in terms of market acceptance. We have divided this into two parts. First of all, the internal evaluation. So here you can see the summary of the evaluation of the jury for what concerns uh, the vehicle dynamics performance. We, we had a, a jury event in which different people from Mahindra and other external evaluators tested the vehicles in comparison with uh, competitors from Europe and competitors uh, from the local market. And as you can see, apart from achieving all the targets that we initially established, we were also able to put ourselves in the same range of the best competition. The second part also is related with the market acceptance in terms of the press results. And uh, the vehicle has been nominated Car of the Year 2021 in India. And it had a very high number of bookings achieved in very few in a very short time. And the press was very positive about the vehicle and especially for what concerns the vehicle dynamics performance. Autocar is one of the most important uh, press in, uh, in India for what concerns the automotive industry. And they stated that the biggest area of improvement over the XUV 500, the predecessor, is the dynamics and that the key of, the, of this new ride and handling performance is the new suspension system. So this, of course, made us very proud of what we were able to achieve. And I would say that this has been really uh, only be possible thanks to the adoption of new technologies, such as the simulator. So in conclusion, uh, this was for us a success story where the simulator was adopted from the very beginning until the very end in order to support a complete development program. And uh, the DIM 250 was absolutely a key element to achieve our project's target. We were able, in fact, to optimize at the same time the budget, so to reduce the cost, but at the same time to achieve a higher level of performance in comparison with, uh, with the past. 
So what are our next steps? So now, in comparison with this program, what we are implementing in new programs on the simulator is the fact that also tire development is being integrated in the simulator, which we did not integrate in this case. All tire development was done physically. So now we are collaborating with different uh, tire suppliers in order to be able to also introduce the tuning of the tires in the simulator. And we are also introducing uh, electronic chassis control system development on the simulator, especially for what concerns the development of the logic related with all-wheel drive strategy for, le uh, for electric vehicles. So this is the end of my presentation. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention.